Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Catherine's as we celebrate the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant for this afternoon's Mass is Father Andy Mantiovich, and can celebrate with him is Father Dennis. As one family in Christ gathered around the table of our Lord, let's now take a few moments to greet and welcome those around. Let's stand and worship together with our opening song, How Can I Keep From Singing? Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. It's a great joy for me to come back here. After eight long years of you praying for me, you finally have a priest, and I'm very grateful for your prayers over these past eight years. It's been a joy for me to learn from this community, to pray with this community, and to walk with this community on the journey of faith. In today's gospel, we hear Jesus calm the raging sea as his disciples cling to the storm-tossed boat. The disciples were terrified that they would die, but Jesus suggests that our faith should have reassured them. Many of us can probably recall a time when our Father came to our rescue, protecting or supporting us, and making everything all right. Today, as we honor our dads, our grandfathers, godfathers, uncles, and those who have acted as fathers in our lives, may their protection and constancy be a model of God's care for us. And so, brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you performed wondrous deeds to lead us closer to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you calmed the seas and brought your disciples to greater faith. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the source of all peace in the storms of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
to pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never to deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Who shut within doors the sea when it burst forth from the womb, when I made made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling bands, when I set limits for it and fastened the bar of its door and said, Thus far shall you come, but no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stilled. The word of the Lord. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all. Therefore, all have died. He indeed died for all so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on we regard no one according to the flesh, even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. A violent squall came up, and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even wind and sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. After a long, hard day at work, almost to the hour, around 9 p.m., whether I was working on homework, doing the dishes, baking cookies, watching TV or a movie, or just hanging out with my family, I would look over to my dad and see him asleep on the couch. Sometimes I would watch a funny movie or show. Sometimes I needed a taste tester for my cookies. Sometimes I needed help with homework. And I just felt I had to wake up my dad to share whatever I was doing with him. Most of the time it was during a movie that I would wake him up and say, Dad, do you not care what you're missing? And every time he would wake up, look at me, and then look at the TV, and say he has already seen it, or he knows how it ends. But as we celebrate Father's Day this weekend, my own experience seeing my dad resting on the couch, as the apostles saw the Lord resting in the boat, the readings today force us to face the question of comfortability with God, our Father in heaven. In the first reading from the book of Job, we hear that God speaks to Job from the storm. From this reading, we see that God is in the storm, that through the storms we experience in life, we are given the opportunities to quell our pride and invite invite us to rely on God, to call out to God, to be comfortable in approaching God and saying we cannot do this thing we call life by ourselves. God is in every storm, and by calling out to him, by being comfortable in approaching him, we find a new perspective as to what is occurring around us in the storm. Throughout our lives, then, we must become more and more comfortable with approaching our almighty and all-loving Father. We develop this comfortability by allowing the love of Christ, which makes all things new, as St. Paul tells us in the second letter to the Corinthians, to overtake our lives and impel us into a deeper relationship with the one who has the power to calm the sea and the wind who has the power to bring peace and tranquility into the messy storms of our lives. We develop this comfortability by recognizing that as a new creation, Christ is always with us in all moments of life, in the bright and happy times, and in the dark and tumultuous times. We must allow the fact that the love of Christ impels us to a new way of thinking, of seeing, and of believing. We must recognize that the love of Christ impels us to a deeper and more personal, comfortable relationship with God, and by doing so, we believe Jesus Christ is in the boat with us. We believe that he guides us through the various storms that we face throughout our life. We believe he is with us even if he is simply sleeping in the boat of our life. And we celebrate that. Because as as my dad slept on the couch, I knew that if I needed him, I knew that if I wanted to show him a scene from a movie or a TV show I was watching, if I needed help with my homework, I would simply just wake him up. God is always with us, and though at times it may seem he has fallen asleep or is uninterested in what is happening in our life, sometimes all we have to do is have the comfortability to call out to God and to wake him up. The apostles in the gospel show us the comfortability we share when we, have to, we are to have with Jesus as they go about their business trying to make it to the other side of the sea. The sea that they knew and worked on so well being fishermen 
before Jesus called them to be his apostles. Being fishermen, you don't lose the skills you acquired throughout your life overnight. So the apostles knew that the storm that was forming on the sea was not a typical one that would simply pass over. They legitimately feared for their life. Having formed a friendship with Jesus before this fateful night on the boat, they had the comfortability to approach him and wake him up asking for help. They said to him, Do you not care that we are perishing? And Jesus simply wakes up and calms the storm and the sea. By waking up Jesus in our own hearts and lives, we are able to be brutally honest with Jesus, with the Lord of all creation, and say to him, Do you not care that this is happening to me? To have that comfortability, to be able to approach the Lord as a gift, and we should seek to become more and more comfortable with the Lord each and every day of our lives so that we can faithfully and truly say, wake up, do you not care that we are perishing? We need to answer the questions, are we comfortable to approach God in prayer when something is happening in our lives that we feel he should see and know about? Are we comfortable enough to approach Jesus sleeping in our boat when we are caught up in a storm of life, whether personal, familial, social, relational, or economic, and ask him to help us? Are we comfortable enough to approach the king of the universe asleep on a cushion in a boat and ask him to calm our storms? Are we comfortable enough to approach God-made man as he rests his tired head and swallow our pride and simply say to him as the apostles did, I need your help? By forming a comfortability with the Lord in the boats of our hearts and in our souls, the storms we experience in our life then to have the potential to take on a new meaning. By awakening the Lord in our boats, we believe that new things have come, that Jesus has the power to make all things new. By waking Jesus in our lives, he does not yell at us for disturbing his sleep, rather he questions us. He asks us as he asks the apostles, where is your faith? Our world tells us that God has died that he has abandoned us and we should turn our focus to things of the world, to fame, success, and money, all things that only create more storms in our lives. We must never forget that Jesus is in our boat, and at times it may seem that he is asleep, that he is unconcerned or unaware of what is happening in our own personal life. But we must always remember he is in our boat. We must continually to seek to develop a true comfortability with Jesus that whenever times get tough, whenever the storms become too powerful, we awaken him in our souls and in our hearts, asking him to act powerfully on our behalf to calm the storm of the sea. Jesus shows us that by being awakened, God is approachable. He is so near to us, so aware to our needs, that despite the human tendency to feel abandoned when we do not see or hear someone's presence, God is still with us in our boat. As we approach this altar to receive Jesus Christ contained in the Eucharist, there is a twofold reality that we must recognize. As we extend our hand in reception of the sacred host, we welcome Christ into our boat, into our hearts, and into our soul, welcoming him into our lives, knowing that he is with us through it all. As we extend our hand in reception of the sacred host, we also acknowledge that Jesus desires to be in a personal relationship with us, a relationship that is grounded in the comfortability to awaken our sleeping Lord when times get tough, when all hope seems lost, and Jesus wakes up, calms our storm, and changes our perspective on life. By the reception of the Eucharist, we come to realize again that from the beginning of our lives, Jesus has been in the boat with us, and he will never abandon us. Sometimes, all it takes is a storm in our life to awaken our desire for God to act, for us to know that God is still with us, to know that he is still in our boat, and by calming our fears, we know that he will safely bring us to the other side.
I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who is crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. We turn now to God who stilled the waves and calmed the sea, confident that the storms in our lives are no match for the power of the Lord. For the church, that we may place our trust in God when we are buffeted by storms that leave us feeling powerless and defeated, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country's leaders, that they may find the courage to fight racism, sexism, discrimination, and inequality so that all people may be treated as we ourselves wish to be treated. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who work on boats and ships, that they may be kept safe while on the water. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all military, police, firefighters, and first responders, may they be kept safe from all harm as they serve and protect us. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For fathers, grandfathers, uncles, godfathers, and all who have fathered us, and for all those fathers who have passed on to eternal life, that God may find favor in them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose lives are in turmoil, who feel that their lives are beset by a never-ending storm, that they may find safety and comfort in God's soothing care, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of the unborn, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all whom we remember today at Mass, especially all fathers, living and deceased, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially Father Ed Stokas, Father John Fiore, Mary Ann Davis, Josephine Kubicki, and all those listed in our parish bulletin, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dearly departed loved ones, especially Lila Galv Gavin and Mary Ann Leward, that they may rest in the peace of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Ever-present God, you created the world and all that is in it. May we find our home in the world Shelter from the storm and comfort in your arms as you respond to our needs to the one whom even the wind and sea obey, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The ushers will take up the collection. Thank you for your continued generosity to our parish.
Sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, who our good and the good of all his church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them out to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and ever to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become in the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ at whose command, command we celebrate these, these mysteries. mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, Take this, this, all of you, and eat of it, it. for this, this is my body, which, which will be given up for you. you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of blood, this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Oh. 
saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Catherine of Alexandria, and all the saints, on his constant intercession, in your presence we rely for your unhailing help, unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our bishop, and his auxiliary bishops, the order of bishops, and all the clergy, and all your entire people whom you have gained for yourselves. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to us all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give them kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. See what you believe in, and become what you receive.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. In the prayer to St. Joseph, St. Joseph, watch over me and care for me just as you care for the child Jesus. And by your help, may I come to know your son and so grow in strength and wisdom in the favor of God. Amen. Okay, I'll do the announcements and then you do the prayer. It is sure nice to have keep on wanting to say Deacon Andy, you know, Father Andy, with us. Now, Father Andy will say hello to you in the back of church, but if you wish to receive his first blessing, well, it's not really first, but one of his first blessings, you could just wait in the pew and just come forward as you would for communion when he comes back into church, okay? And he's got a little special gift for you. Uh, the ushers will be passing them out. He has a holy card with, uh, with the date of his ordination on it. So um, always a special uh, holy card to receive. Now our grand prize drawing for $75,000 is next Sunday, June 27th. And good luck to everyone who supported our raffle. Now, I understand that even, there's either just a few tickets left or we're all sold out. So thank you, thank you. And our 55 plus club will gather for 8.30 mass on Tuesday, this Tuesday, June 22nd, pray the rosary after Mass, and then go out to breakfast at the Waffle Pancake House. All are welcome. And a reminder that we have a short 15-minute communion service in church at 6.30 a.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. It is a great way to start your day. Also, our 8.30 morning Mass, Monday through Friday, is open to everyone. Our St. Vincent de Paul is having a Father's Day food drive this weekend for the food pantry at St. Germain. And I see a lot of food items have already come in. Please remember to return your Father's Day Mass intention envelopes, there are extra ones in the back of church, include those fathers, grandfathers, godfathers, and father figures, living and deceased, whom you would like to have remembered at a special monthly mass offered up throughout the year on the third Saturday of the month at 8.30. In our second collection today, was to th support uh, the, the charitable activities of our Holy Father, Peter Pence. Thank you for your support. Next weekend, because the 4th of July falls on a Sunday, there will be no 6 p.m. evening Mass. And on behalf of St. Catherine's Parish, we would like to wish all fathers and those who have acted as fathers to us a most happy and blessed Father's Day. And I sent out a special call this past week. How many of you received that call? All right. It was a little blessing for our fathers. So I'd like to pray that blessing now. Heavenly Father, you entrusted your son Jesus, the child of Mary, to the care of Joseph, our 
an earthly father. Bless all fathers as they care for their families. Give them strength and wisdom, tenderness and patience. Support them in their work they have to do. Through Jesus Christ, our rock and defender, St. Joseph, pray for all our fathers. Amen. And lastly, I'd like to thank the Knights of Columbus, Our Lady of Fatima, for their presence today. They have been a support to Andy over the years. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. I just want to take this opportunity to thank you all again for your prayers over these past eight years. It's good to see fruition to some prayers. Sometimes we don't see our prayers get answered until we pass the veil and we see God face to face. But I'm living proof that your prayers have worked, so I want to thank you again. I begin my first assignment as the Associate Pastor and Director of Liturgy at Holy Name Cathedral on July 1st. All of you are welcome to come and visit because it's your cathedral as well. I ask you to pray for me, pray for my classmates as we begin our priestly ministry, and know that whatever altar I find myself at, I will be thinking of you and praying for you until we see each other on the other side of the veil. And Andy, you may want to mention to your family that uh, we have been recording this Mass and uh, it'll be available, it was streamed live, right? Plus then it'll be available at our website also. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.